Hey, what's up, guys? Mike, Mike from, from Hardware, Hardware Canucks, Canucks and, and Snows, Snows from, from Boot Sequence. Sequence. Hey, guys, Mike from Hardware Canucks here, and next to me is Snows from our Boot Sequence channel. And this video, as you probably saw by the title, is all about FSR. And there's a little bit of a history behind this because I initially did not want to actually do this video and he convinced me to. Yeah, I did because I personally think that FSR is fascinating. It's AMD's counterpart to DLSS. It works completely differently and uh, you'll see that the results are pretty surprising. And for me, I didn't want to do it because AMD gave us all of three days to analyze, review, test, and actually experience something that I think could be a real game changer in this industry. So it sort of like turned me off of it, but this guy convinced me, and I guess we're gonna get into all of that, and especially him, because he's really obsessed with FSR. He can go through a bunch of stuff right after a message from our sponsor. You think you can escape brand loyalty? Not today. Introducing the full Origin series of gaming goodies by Thermaltake. They have it all to satisfy your gaming station. The full-size keyboard with that unique dual-tone design, the two ambidextrous loaded mouse options, wired and wireless, the smooth mouse pad with RGB, of course, the mouse bungee to eat your cable for control, the H5 headset with powerful high-res audio, and the pretty headset stand to tie everything together. Do you even game, bro? Become an Argent yourself. Check these out below. All right, so FSR. Let's talk about the technology behind it. It's it's actually very simple, and it's split into two parts. First, it renders the game at a lower resolution and then scales it up, and the second one is kind of a refinement, a sharpening, if you will. Now, scaling can be done in so many ways, and you've probably heard of a couple of them before. For example, for retro gaming, the preferred method is called integer scaling or point scaling. Basically, you take each pixels and you multiply them exactly as they are, and then you get a crisp replica of your retro game at a higher resolution. But here with FSR, we're dealing with 3D games, which means that doing that just makes the image look bigger, but not necessarily better. For scaling on 3D games, it's better to use other methods, which is why AMD and Nvidia go for a two-step process. So upscaling is the first process, but which one does AMD use for FSR? Well, they've confirmed that it's spatial upscaling, which unfortunately has me a bit worried. You see, DLSS 1.0 actually used spatial upscaling as its first stage, and then a deep learning neural network to reconstruct the image. And we all know how that turned out. It was a blurry Vaseline mess, and it got scrapped completely when DLSS 2.0 came out. Instead, NVIDIA went for a temporal upscaling solution as its first stage. So does that mean that FSR is as bad as DLSS 1.0? Well, not necessarily, because the second stage for upscaling is just as important as the first one, if not more. And for that second stage, AMD uses a sharpening pass, but not any kind of sharpening pass. It's actually based on CAS or contrast adaptive sharpening. Thanks to that and the edge reconstruction algorithms in place, FSR gives you a higher quality image while barely affecting the performance that you gained with the upscaler. And with that integration of CAS, that's why in a lot of games, you'll see that you can can't enable CAS along with FSR. And in the games where you can enable CAS, AMD actually recommends that you leave it off. Now, what about compatibility? Well, as you know, AMD will support GPUs all the way down to the RX 460. It will also support select NVIDIA GPUs. The other thing I wanted to talk about though is the compatibility with games because right now at the very dawn of this technology, it's really, really limited to what is going on with sponsored AMD titles. So those sponsored AMD titles are things like Anno 1800, Godfall, King's Hunt, which is upcoming, Evil Genius 2, Terminator Resistance, and The Rift Breaker. So the other thing that I really wanted to see is a list from AMD of actual games that they're gonna be supporting coming up because you can't really get a technology to go and to gain traction without that firm list of games. So it looks like there's gonna be a bunch of other titles, especially among those. The upcoming Vampire game, Dota 2, things like that, that are so important to have those AAA titles. Far Cry 6, I love Far Cry. Far Cry 6, but that's another go fetch things game, I'm yeah. sure. But anyways, before I get too far into this section, there's one thing I really need to mention, and that's the fact that YouTube will want to absolutely crush the quality of these 4K images 
and videos that we've taken. So no matter what device that you're on, please by all means make sure you manually set the absolute highest quality that's supported. Starting off with Anno 1800 and what you'll see here will actually carry into a lot of the other games too. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time explaining these things. So from further out as we go through the settings there's a general loss of tree and foliage quality which isn't a huge deal for the most part but there's also an overall loss of sharpness in the image. It almost looks like there's a little bit of Vaseline poured over it especially as the FSR levels increase. Everything looks a little bit softer without clearly defined edges. And you can see some shimmering in the edges around the ships too. But let's zoom in to take a little bit closer look too because that's where things get really interesting. When we move from FSR off into ultra quality, there's actually a very, very minimal loss in the detail on the logs and the foliage. But overall, it looks pretty close to running the game without FSR. Moving to quality, and you can see that some of the details with some jagged edges start to get worse, and some items like the logs start to look really, really odd. But it's still almost unnoticeable when actually playing the game. And that's something really important to focus on here is we're pixel peeping, but people are actually playing this game with the images moving. But then balance mode is when the image quality really starts taking a hit since FSR is simply struggling to rebuild details from a limited upscale resolution. The people start looking like blobs, I guess. Small details are actually pixelated like the flags, the building roof, and the logs again, and the spurs on the ships. Finally, in performance mode, well, what can I really say about this? There's a huge image quality sacrifice in Anno 1800. I mean, from far away, it looks, still looks okay, but anyways, that's all to get the best possible performance. And in a lot of graphics cards anyways, as you're gonna see later in the performance results, you're already operating at a pretty high frame rate anyways, so you probably don't wanna get to this point. Basically, every small detail gets destroyed while the foliage and rocks on the beach end up looking like jagged messes. Anyways, that's a single title, so let's use this as a basis for some of the other games. And of course, we have Godfall, the poster child of AMD's marketing. So this one has to be the best possible. And what you'll see is pretty much the same as in Anno 1800, but it's a lot less apparent. This is actually a good example of why FSR might be the most beneficial in faster games like this one, where you have a lot less time to look at the really, really small details. But if you really want to pixel peep, then let's bring out a few things. First of all, as FSR levels are increased, there's some blurring and loss of the finer details, like in the tree in the background, or on the ground, and also in the character model. But none of these things is going to bother you in a hack and slash button masher like this, but we still have to mention it, they're still there. Another thing we picked up is that any rendering artifacts, like the shimmering around the column and the steps, actually become worse as you go through the FSR levels. And it's actually things like that which are a lot more distracting than any loss of detail. Moving on to Rift Breaker, and you actually see all of the elements I've already mentioned in Anno and Godfall blended into one. But even here, it's just really hard to pick out the differences between quality and ultra quality with the naked eye, especially if you're actually playing the game. Either way, you'll end up seeing the same blurriness, the same detail reduction of foliage, and in this case, the blood in front of the gates does lose a little bit of that definition. But really, as FSR upscales lower and lower resolution renderings, the problems do tend to increase. All right, so moving on to Terminator, and this is actually one that Snows really wanted to see, so I'm gonna let him take it from here. In Terminator, I think we're seeing every one of the highlights Mike mentioned piled into one game. While ultra quality and even the quality settings don't have a ton of changes from FSR off, some game elements either start disappearing, like that fence in the background, while rocks in the distance end up looking like they've been smeared with a bit of you know, Vaseline. The good thing is that elements closer to the player aren't really affected, though the gun does get a minor hit on its details. But look, when you factor movement into all this, the small differences are almost impossible to pick out. What I like is the fact that even this early, other than a few small areas, adding FSR doesn't absolutely destroy the look of these games. But I'd still recommend sticking to ultra quality or quality if your GPU can handle it. 
And I guess what we wanted to get into as well, now that you know what these games look like, is what kind of performance do you get? Because AMD has made some mad claims about it, and we really wanted to test that out at every single quality level. I have to mention here, we're testing all of the quality levels, but at 4K in order to test the absolute limits of FSR on graphics cards that usually struggle to hit playable frame rates at that resolution. So which card did I choose? Well, everyone here wanted to skip the best case scenario with an RX 6000 series or an RTX 3000 card. So we went with a duo of cards from a couple of years ago, the RX 5700 XT and the RTX 2070 Super. Which is behind which, us right now. Which yeah. is behind <laughs> us and a ton of people are still rocking. First, let's start with Anno 1800. I wanted to start with this one since it's the most challenging of all the games we benchmarked. Without FSR enabled, it just got under 40 frames per second at the highest detail settings and the 1% lows at around 30 FPS. Now, while this is completely playable for a strategy game, when we add ultra quality FSR to this, the frame rate increases a lot. You get a way smoother experience without too much of an impact on the visuals. Honestly, just playing from a normal distance, I can't tell the difference. But moving on from there, and you start sacrificing image quality for higher performance. Basically, each step upwards in FSR performance equals between 15 to 20% higher frame rate, but also a reduction of image quality, as you saw earlier. The interesting thing here is it's almost a linear ramp up between settings. So in the end, you get almost double the average frame rate and a good 70% better 1% lows between FSR off and its highest performance setting. Now for Godfall in 4K, it's another challenging game for any graphics cards and without FSR, the 5700 XT puts up barely playable frame rates in such a fast paced game. Add fidelity affects super resolution to the mix and even in ultra quality, you get above 60 FPS and the ramp up continues from there. I guess this is all about how much image quality you're actually willing to sacrifice to get what you feel is a playable frame rate. But in this game, going from FSR off to performance settings will give you about triple the performance. Now we got Riftbreaker. So I'll be straight up with you, Riftbreaker doesn't need a ton of GPU horsepower. I mean, look, even with this RX 5700 XT, I was getting almost 100 FPS in a typical mission. But if you absolutely need to light your pants on fire, just turning the dial up every notch bumps things up by a good 25% or sometimes even more. And finally, we have <laughs> Terminator Resistance, and you guessed it, all you need to do is find the right setting that you feel delivers the possible performance. I keep on repeating the same thing, but what do you want? These games, it's all the same kind of uh, improvement that you're going to get. Exactly. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about is that RTX 2070 that we were testing with like super early this morning, which is right back there, like I was saying. And look, AMD claims that this is driver agnostic, that FSR can be used with cards that go way back in time. Now, can it? And that's where the RTX 2070 Super sort of comes into the equation. And it's not actually performance that I wanted to focus on first. It's from a visual quality standpoint, is there a difference? And as we go through these images, you're actually gonna see that there's absolutely no difference between the AMD and Nvidia cards. If there's a visual artifact on one card, it's gonna be there on the other one too. And you can expect that to happen up and down all of the supported cards with FSR. That's just the nature of this technology since the upscaling and filters it applies aren't driver based. As for the improvement in performance, there's actually nothing new to report here that's different from the improvements that we saw in the RX 5700 XT. There's still a super linear uptick in frame rates as you go through the settings. You can get some really, really impressive performance from an Nvidia card if that's what you're after. So I guess this confirms it. There's no lock on this tech. So good on you, AMD, good on you, because everybody, including Nvidia, needs to take some notes here. Well, with all of that out of the way, I had a little bit of a make work project for us at like the last second. And I wanted to know what would happen if you modified the in-game settings to try and achieve the exact same frame rate as the FSR quality setting gets you. Right away in Godfall, the differences in image quality are absolutely massive. We needed to turn off almost 
every single setting down to either medium or even low while also turning off ray tracing. The result is, well, really not all that pretty, is it? The textures are dull, the shadows had to be turned down, and the entire scene looks like seriously lifeless. Almost like a game that was released three years ago on a console. And I mean, it's pretty obvious, using Fidelity FX Super Resolution allows you to boost FPS and keep some amazing looking game effects. All of that with a visual impact that is much, much less severe than just turning down your settings. So I guess you have now, Snows, convinced mm -hmm. me <laughs> that this was a good project to put forward because it really made me go from a doubter of FSR and a little bit angry at AMD for the amount of time that they left us with this project to actually thinking that this is a really, really bona fide great piece of technology. And guys, this is just the beginning. AMD told us that FSR is just one of the breakthrough on upscaling technologies that they had. They're still working on it and they're not excluding things like deep learning or neural networks. So you might see something come up in the future. And as long as it stays open like the way that they're pushing it right now. And uh, I, I want to ask you a question to you. Uh -oh. <laughs> Who won, FSR or DLSS? FSR allows people with lower end GPUs mm -hmm. to rediscover some of the great technologies that are out there or just discover them. I mean, look, we were able to take an RX 5700 XT and we could probably take even lower end cards mm -hmm and enable ray tracing in Godfall. Mm -hmm. That in itself allows a whole other realm of technology to be opened up to those lower end cards. The openness of it, I'm gonna say, believe it or not, that FSR has won right now. Not necessarily for image quality, but just in my heart. Yeah, that I agree too. It's just so much better when it brings back old things and it has such a wide uh, compatibility stack. Exactly, and especially right now in a GPU market that you can't really buy GPUs, which is why we test with the ones we did. So I guess that pretty much wraps everything up. Thank you very much for convincing me of this one too, just like you did with the Indium. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm Mike with Haro Canucks. And I'm Snows from Boot Sequence, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Let's start with the countdown, okay? The what? A countdown. 30, 29, 28. <laughs> if you need to kick... Oh. Kick in the pants, boy. Look, now he's leaning in, Robert. By the way, guys, we're 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 vaccinated over here. Just bit my tongue so hard. the phone. <laughs> and this is. <laughs> I hate that. Do you not hate that? I feel like a news anchor. You know how they switch the. You just said I need medium garlic sauce, which I don't understand. What is medium garlic sauce? <laughs> I don't know.